All right. Well, here it is, uh, late fall, uh, about the first week of November, and uh, the rose hips are ripe. These are Floribunda roses. So, as you can see, the rose hips are quite small, but they are edible, and you can make them into a tea. I've heard that inside the rose hip are some irritating hairs that you want to uh, filter out or remove in some way. I've not noticed that myself with the Floribunda roses. I've never made them into tea, but I'm going to today. And uh, maybe you only get the irritating effect if you make them into tea. I've ate them off the vine and had no problems with uh, throat irritation or anything. Just munching them and uh, getting the juice out of them and spitting out the seeds. But I'm going to go ahead and harvest a bunch and make some tea today. Floribunda rose, an invasive species in southern Michigan. If it weren't for invasive species, we'd have no species at all. Well, I went around and I picked about an eighth of a cup of these rose hips. I just wanted to quickly show you. The rose bush is very easy to identify. I'm pretty sure most people know what one looks like. They all typically look very similar. This is a Floribunda rose, like I said. And the main thing is it has smooth bark. It has thorns that will break off and the bark will be flush where they break off. They pop right off the stem. It has finely toothed leaves. that are pinnate. The leaves are the leaves come off a small branch and are opposite one another and are finely toothed. Just in case you're wondering, I figured I'd show that. I don't do much with identification in my videos, but I figured I'd put it out there. This is an easy plant to identify, and these rose hips are full of vitamin C. And when they're ripe and red, they taste pretty good. I'm all tangled up in the briars. But, just so you can see, there's what I harvested. There's about an eighth of a cup in there, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter cup. And I'm going to use these to make tea, so I'm going to go find a spot and get me a little fire going and brew up some rosehip tea. Here's another variety of rose that I'm unfamiliar with, but I do know it's a rose. Uh, these are quite small. There's quite a few of them in this area, but they have much larger rose hips. Than the Floribunda roses. And they have much narrower pointier thorns. But the thorns still break off the same way as the Floribunda roses. If you get down to the base and you push on it, the whole thorn will come off and it'll be smooth on the bark where that thorn was. 
the rose hips always have this little tuft of dead uh, flower material at the top here. That's another easy identifying feature. I'm going to gather up a few of these, but I'm not going to put them in with my rose hip tea that I'm making today because this is the first time I've found these. It could be that these are the ones that have the irritating hairs. There's a deer hoof print. That looks like a buck too. Nice. So I'm gonna gather a few of these up and head on out. I figured I'd just show you that. It's another variety of rose. It has an edible rose hip. I don't know what type of rose this is. It appears that it only gets a a foot or two tall stays kind of small and spindly but produces large rose hips up to uh, eh, close to a half inch in diameter well there's the fire it's a bit of a rager I'm going to let it die down a little bit here and then I'll put my uh, water on there to boil. I'm just going to hang it over that stick. I'm just going to bring the water to a boil and uh, just kind of bruise those up just a little bit, the rose hips, and uh, put them in there and let it steep off the heat for 10 or 15 minutes. All right, well, it took about five, ten minutes for that little thing of water to get boiling here. And uh, I went ahead and crushed my rose hips up just a little bit and threw them and uh, a couple mullen leaves in there. Poured the boiling water on them and I'm just gonna let that steep for about 10-15 minutes this is my bag that I collect wild edibles in it's just a uh, reusable grocery bag let's see here acmebags.com I have no idea but it works really good for collecting wild edibles and it also works real good as a, a makeshift filter I'm gonna use it to filter out the seeds and stuff from this rose hip tea it's pretty fine mesh if you have some really fine particles you can sit a napkin in there as well and uh, that'll catch everything and anything and then you'll just end up with a nice clean liquid in your little can little pot just another little tip multi-purpose item this bag can be used as a bug net over my head to keep mosquitoes off it can also be used to collect wild ed edibles and it can also be used as a filter among other things all right so there we go i took my uh little billy can here and boiled some water i took my other little stainless cup and put the rose hips and mullen leaves in it poured the boiling water into the stainless cup and then i put my wild edible 
gathering bag over the billy can and poured the rosehip tea through it after it steeped for about 10-15 minutes. Use this as a filter. And now I have rosehip and mullen tea that is completely free or at least mostly free of sediment. I see a little something down in the bottom there, very fine particles. Maybe those are the hairs that make your throat itch. We'll find out. i go ahead and give it a try. Bottoms up. Hmm, doesn't taste bad. I can just barely taste the mullen. And there's a hint of something else, and I guess that would be the rose hips. Well, it's definitely refreshing. I don't know if you can see those fine little particles in the bottom. They have a reddish tinge to them, so I'm thinking they're from the rose hips. I think I'll just leave that in the bottom there and not risk uh, getting an irritated throat from the hairs, if that's what that is. But that tasted fine.